Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. That means both indoors and out. And in today's video, we're talking about hydrogen peroxide. Now, I did do a video a year or two ago, not the greatest quality about hydrogen peroxide in general, but I totally missed the mark on the difference between food grade hydrogen peroxide and regular hydrogen peroxide because there is a big difference when it comes to plants both indoors and outside so if you're using hydrogen peroxide thinking of using hydrogen peroxide either on those plants or in your soil then you most definitely want to stay tuned now i did include a free printable with this with the recipe in which you can mix your hydrogen peroxide if you so choose i have the soil version or the soil recipe and then i also have of the leaf treatment recipe, which would be for like bacterial or fungal issues. If you want to grab that, be sure to do so. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just on the website. I'm gonna leave the link down below. Anyways, let's get into the story of hydrogen peroxide. My dogs are having uh, a time. I don't know what's happening down there. Anyways. If you're here for the short answer, the answer is yes, you should just use food grade hydrogen peroxide. If you're here for the long answer, well, let's get into it. Okay, so what exactly is hydrogen peroxide? Well, its chemical formula is H2O2, and that makes it incredibly unstable. So the chemical makeup of hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. O2. So you know the periodic table, the periodic table, and you know that oxygen has eight electrons surrounding it. Um, I'm not going to get too technical here, but it wants to become a noble gas, which is a total where the whole, all the valence electrons are filled in, which would be 10. So the next valent, um, next noble gas on the periodic table is actually neon which is in the top corner over there so that is what oxygen is trying to achieve and the best way for oxygen to achieve this is through two extra hydrogens because hydrogen only has one which is this bad boy up here in the corner and so we just need two hydrogens to attach to our oxygen which makes h2o which we are all very familiar with and our plants are familiar with as well however if you have hydrogen peroxide you got two oxygens and only two hydrogens. That means that oxygen, the second oxygen, really wants to grab an extra two hydrogen and break apart into oxygen and water. And until it can get there or while we're trying to stabilize it, it is actually sharing both of those hydrogens and the hydrogens are kind of just hopping in between the two oxygens, which makes it actually a really unstable element. And so what happens is it is really difficult to keep this stuff shelf stable. So we add things in. And this is what we see when we grab hydrogen peroxide from the pharmacy. So hydrogen peroxide from the pharmacy does have additives in it. One of the main additives that we are most concerned about is silver. And we're gonna get into why we care about silver being added, but all we need to know is that there is additives. With the food grade version, it is anything but shelf stable, meaning you can't just find it at a grocery store. And therefore, if you do open it or you do use it, you only have a limited amount of time to actually use it up. So if you ever have had hydrogen peroxide go bad in your house or in your little pharmacy kit, it's because it's incredibly unstable. And so we have to add things. But this instability in our H2O2 chemical is actually what makes hydrogen peroxide so darn good at what it does and that is disinfecting and bleaching. Now we know this because we used to have this put on our cuts as children and it stings and this is because there's rapid decomposition happening in the presence of hydrogen peroxide. That means if hydrogen peroxide attaches itself to anything organic it is going to rapidly degrade it. So that includes good bacteria, bad bacteria, good fungi, bad fungi, and our good and bad skin cells, which is actually why doctors don't recommend using hydrogen peroxide on cuts any longer, because we actually don't want to kill off all our microbes that help with healing. We want to 
don't want to leave some behind. But when it comes to the pharmacy grade stuff, there is silver present. And I wasn't too sure as to whether or not this would be a problem. So I decided to dig into the scientific literature and I found a journal published by uh, American Science. And they say, I quote, silver beware, antimicrobial nanoparticles in soil may harm life. And in this study, they looked at the effects of nanoparticulate silver on plants, but more specifically on the soil. So when they decided to jump into this, they weren't looking at this from a hydrogen, per hydrogen peroxide perspective. This is just my own spin on it as to why you should fo choose food grade over regular. You have to keep in mind now, not all hydrogen peroxides have silver. They do have other additives, but I can't speak to the one-offs. I can only speak to the majority, which do have silver. And surprisingly, silver nanoparticles are not just in hydrogen peroxide. They're actually used in odor resistant clothing, hand sanitizer, water treatment systems, micro proof teddy bears. And I'm confused by this, but I feel like it's probably like an, um, an hypoallergenic teddy bear for children. I would assume, and then obviously hydrogen peroxide as well. But what they discovered is that these nanoparticulates or silver are finding their way into the soil. Now, if it's in a water treatment plant, obviously it's finding its way into the soil through irrigation, us watering our plants, um, just general river flow after the water has been treated, just getting in the banks, you name it. That's how this nano silver is getting into our environments, if it gets into our homes, which it would through the use of hydrogen peroxide or some of these odor resistant clothings, what they're finding happens is that silver is an incredibly, incredibly good antimicrobial additive. So if we have nanoparticulate silver in our soil systems, whether that be outdoors in our garden or inside in our house plants, we are decreasing our microbial activity and therefore we're decreasing our ability to fight disease, fight pests and cycle nutrients. So you can see where this issue can lead to, especially if it ends up in our soil. So we know now that regular hydrogen peroxide is probably just not good to purchase in any capacity, but food safe hydrogen peroxide does have its benefits, uh, mostly because it doesn't have that silver, but it still gives us that really explosive decomposition of organic material. Now, the next question is, is food grade hydrogen peroxide safe for plants? Now, I'm gonna give you my spiel that I give so many times, you're probably irritated, but I do not believe in sterilizing soil. I gave you the recipe on the printout, but here it's from my lips. I do not recommend putting this in your soil. The only, there's one scenario in which I will say yes to sterilizing the soil with either hot water or with hydrogen peroxide in this case. And that is if you are germinating seeds or you're growing seedlings. This is because seedlings need a sterile environment. But if you have house plants, such as all these ones behind me, my soil is so far from sterile, it is not even funny. The dirtier the dirt, the better. So with that being said, if you so choose to use hydrogen peroxide on your plant leaves, and it is food grade, if it touches the surface of your soil and doesn't necessarily penetrate into your soil, it's okay because there's plenty of studies done that show that microbial activity will reinvade or recolonize the areas that have been sterilized within 24 to 72 hours, so long as your existing potting soil is microbially active. So, so long as you have a soil that you are keeping nice and moist, you're keeping well aerated, you're keeping on the aerobic side instead of the anaerobic side, you're fine you're okay. You can use it to fight pests and disease on the leaf bit top parts. And quite honestly, it is a relatively gentle disinfectant compared to something like a Dawn dish soap detergent, which we did an entire video on why you shouldn't use that. But if you were to choose something that was a little bit more gentle, but yet still effective, then hydrogen peroxide would be a great choice for pretty much any infection. That could be for both pests physical insects, and then also bacterial or fungal issues because it 
comes in contact with that organic material and it eats it away, it busts it up. Now, keep in mind, it also is going to affect the beneficials and stuff on your plant leaves. So if you're using things like um, predatory mites, for example, hold off on a hydrogen peroxide treatment until you think the mites have run their course and they're no longer with you. So, so one fun fact about hydrogen peroxide and plants is that plants produce their own H2O2. Yes, I know. They are, they, they're sadists. They really enjoy hurting themselves. But yes, they do produce their own H2O2, but for good reason. H2O2 plays a very crucial role in maintaining homeostasis and adaptation to changes in the plant's environment. The fun fact about all of this is that it is stored in very specialized organelles in the plant cells themselves and there is a catalase inside of that organelle that immediately busts up that h2o2 immediately upon arrival so just something to think about but our plants do naturally produce that we actually naturally produce hydrogen peroxide as well same organelles same catalase that well slightly different but that break it up and and such so just a fun fact there the one hack i see hydrogen peroxide used for all the time which is just total garbage is the fact that it's used for increasing porosity or air oxygen aeration within the soil system and this is totally fake the reason why it's fake is because our soil in general physicality contains natural amounts of pore space now if you have a sandy soil you may have fewer pores but the pores you do have are larger meaning they contain larger volumes of both oxygen, air, nutrients, and then soil particulate. If we have a clay soil, we have a soil that has very small pores, but a ton of them compared to the sand. That means that the air and water spaces that we do have are a little bit smaller. The balance is a little bit more precarious when it comes to evading an anaerobic environment, let's just say that. And then in a peat-based or a coconut coir-based soil, we kind of are somewhere in between. Keep in mind, if you add things like pumice, perlite, coconut uh, husk, you're increasing not the volume of soil porosity, but the size of singular pores, which obviously will add aeration into our soil. That means if we add hydrogen peroxide to our soil, while yes, it does turn to water and oxygen upon arrival into an organic system, such as potting soil or just outdoor soil, yes, it does do that. But keep in mind, if you overwatered your plant and you're having issues with an anaerobic environment, you're worried about root rot, Adding um, hydrogen peroxide isn't going to do anything. You're adding more water for one. And secondly, you are, yes, adding oxygen, but that oxygen doesn't have anywhere to stay because your soil pores are completely occupied with water. They're occupada. So they're not going anywhere. Um, the, the oxygen that is released is immediately gonna be gassed off because it has nowhere to stay. That's why you see all the bubbles forming. That's the oxygen literally leaving your soil profile. So when you have overwatered, hydrogen peroxide is not gonna help. If you have an old soil that you think is compacted, again, your oxygen, the H2O2, is not gonna do anything. It's just going to simply gas off because you don't have a ton of space in those pores to begin with. Not only that, but I really worry about that. Roots die off. I mean, there's pores in there. I can promise you that much. But you are not going to add more oxygen. You're not going to end root rot. You're not even going to treat root rot for that matter. Unless if you actually physically took the entire um, plant out and then you put the roots in like a hydrogen peroxide mixture, you could do that to get rid of the harmful bacteria. But ultimately, if you just put in a more airy soil, root rot can't survive in the presence of oxygen. So literally the cure to root rot is just oxygen that actually stays in the soil. So just simply repotting, using a fork, fluffing that soil in some way to help with aeration is immediately gonna kill them off because they need an anaerobic environment, not an aerobic environment. 
So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please let me know down in the comments below. Be sure to grab the free printout. If you do want to use hydrogen peroxide either on the leaves or in your soil, don't use it in the soil unless you're using it for seedlings. Just my opinion. I'm just giving you guys the tools to garden better, both indoors and outside. If you choose to go crazy on me, that's not my fault, but I do not recommend it. Anyways, if you guys did not know, check out the blog, check out the podcast, Instagram, Facebook, and sign up for the newsletter. If you like tips and tricks like this, if you like discount codes for the new planners that came out, there's that too, sign up for that. Anyways, I don't gotta, and oh yeah, I gotta do the YouTube thing. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button and tap that subscribe, especially if you made it to the end of this video. I mean, that obviously means you like me just a little bit. We can be plenty people together. We have a great community of folks here. So I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.